Okay, here we are. Uh, I've been having some technical difficulties, but here we are, ready to roll, part two of our final test, practice test review. So, on to our integer rules and good old fun. So, first we're going to be looking at addition. So, if I'm looking at these sums of these integers, well, make the sums of the integers, mark the sums of the integers as either positive or negative. So, I know I'm adding two negative numbers. So, if I think about this like money, you know, I spend money, I spend more money, I can't end up with getting money and keep spending money. Or I can just remember that they're both negative, so my answer has to be negative. So, there's that one. Next one. So, the next three, actually, all have different signs. So, I have to be careful. I have to look at each of these and remember that the sign is going to have the final sign of my answer is going to have the sign of the integer with the largest absolute value, meaning the number that's the furthest away from zero. So if I look at positive 7 and negative 3, the one that's the furthest away from zero, when I look at their absolute values, it, of course, should be obvious that it's going to be 7. 7 is positive, so this one is going to be positive. Next one, if I look at their absolute values, well, that's just messy. And I know that that may confuse you if you go back and look at it. So let me fix that. So the absolute value of positive 5 and the absolute value of negative 12. Well, obviously, negative 12 is further away from 0, so the answer is going to be negative. And then my final one, I've got negative 12 and positive 15. 15 is further away from 0 than negative 12, so my answer is going to be positive. That was fun. Next, type the integer that makes the following subtraction sentence true. Well, we know that when we look at this, we like to have a good old variable in there when we look at it. So x minus negative 5 equals 7. Well, first of all, let's clean this up. Stay, change, change, cha-cha-cha. Stay, change, change, cha-cha-cha. Don't forget to cha-cha-cha or you'll get it wrong. Well, now it's far easier to do, but let's follow our rules. What's the opposite of plus 5? We know that it's minus 5, minus 5 from both sides. These two cancel, I'm left with x equals 2, and that of course is a positive 2. So the answer that would go in here is positive 2. Okay, so moving right along to our next problem, same type of problem. So what do we have here? We've got um, type the integer that makes the following addition sentence true. So I'm just going to rewrite it below here. x plus negative 8 equals negative 2. So there's no way to clean this up because it's already an addition problem. There's no changing anything. So I'm just going to dive right in and do the opposite. What is the opposite of plus negative 8? Well, we know or should know that it's minus negative 8. Now, I know that looks messy, but think about it. You should know that if you've got eight negatives, then to make it hit zero, you need to take eight negatives away. So those cancel. I'm left with x on this side equals, well, let's pull this to the side for a second and just really look at it. I've got negative two minus negative eight. I know there's a bunch of you out there who've already done this, did it in your head, probably did something silly. Let's break it down and look at it. Okay, I want to stay change, change, cha, cha, cha. If you don't cha, 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 you're going to get it wrong. Stay change, change, cha, cha, cha. Now I get to follow my addition rules. If the signs are the same, find the sum. But the signs are different, find the difference. Of course, I'm finding the difference of their absolute values. So 8 minus 2, of course, is 6. 
And then just like the previous pages, well, a couple of pages ago, I look at the sign of the larger absolute value, which of course is eight. So my answer is positive. So X equals positive six. Here's my answer. So positive six is what goes in here. And if you think about it, if I look on a thermometer, it's six degrees and it drops eight degrees, I end up at negative two. So that answer really does make sense, right? So all of these fun things that we do really do make sense in the end. Ah, I we've now moved on from addition, at least at this point, to multiplication. So I'm actually, they've got the evil X there, meaning that they're using it to show multiplication, but I'm going to fix that right down here. We're going to make it say negative 6x equals negative 42, right? What's the question we ask? Well, we always ask, what's the opposite of times negative 6? The opposite of multiplying is always dividing. Divide by negative 6, both sides. I'm left with x equals 42 divided by 6 is 7. A negative divided by a negative, well, those two negatives are getting along. They're awfully happy, so that makes them positive. So my answer is x equals positive 7, or positive 7 is what goes in here, because positive 7 times negative 6 is 42, right? Um, what do we have coming up next? I love the anticipation. Ah, a division problem. So we've got, let's rewrite this, x divided by negative 5 equals negative 4. Same question every time. What's the opposite of dividing by negative 5? Well, hopefully you realize that it's multiplying times negative 5. You want to imagine that being over 1. These are going to cancel. I'm left with x equals, well, what's negative 4 times negative 5? Again, I've got these two negatives making each other happy. So it's going to be positive, and 4 times 5 is 20. So my answer is x equals positive 20, and that means 20 divided by negative 5 equals negative 4. Great job. Let's keep cruising along here. Ah, we've got multi-steps going on here. Type the integer that makes the following addition sentence true. So I've got x plus negative 11 plus 12 equals negative 16. Well, we know how to combine like terms. So let's make sure that that's how we approach that problem. There might have been a time when we did this differently, but it's important that we now use all of the tools that we've, been, we've learned throughout the year. So I'm going to box this in because I'm going to ignore it for now and underline the two constants because I'm going to combine those. So I bring those down here. I've got negative 11 plus 12. The signs are different. Find the difference. So if I were to look at the absolute values of negative 11 and 12, I would do 12 minus 11, which of course is 1. The larger absolute values right here with the 12, so that's positive, right? And then bring down this x, and I actually shouldn't have written that positive hanging up in the air like that. What it really should be is plus 1, because a positive and a plus are the same. So I've got x plus 1 equals negative 16. Then I say to myself, well, what's the opposite of plus 1? And hopefully you remember that the opposite of plus 1 is minus 1. So I subtract 1 from both sides. These two cancel. I'm left with x equals negative 16 minus 1. Well, I spent $16, and I'm going to spend one more. That means I've spent $17. Or I can think about that the thermometer. It's negative 16 degrees. It goes down one more. It's negative 17 degrees. 
so negative 17 is the answer that goes in there okay how we doing next problem isn't this fun oh, boy. nothing better multiply the expression and write the answer as a simplified fraction <laughs> fractions actually these are rational numbers because they are not just fractions and mixed numbers but they've got those beautiful wonderful ever so fun negatives in there so the first thing we need to do is take care of this mixed number because we cannot do any multiplication with a mixed number in here so let's just kind of go off to the side and make sure everybody remembers how to do this so we got two and seven eighths and yes i realize it's negative we don't really need to worry about that so much right now but i'll bring it along so we go here and i go eight times two h times 2 equals it's times make sure it's a nice beautiful dot 8 times 2 is 16 and then whatever I get from there so this is multiplication and then whatever I get from here I add so I do 16 plus 7 equals 23 okay so hopefully everybody followed that along if not back it up if you're really confused as always Please make sure you come to see me. So the number that's on top of that, or that's on top of, I should say, is the 8. So I've got 23 over 8. And don't forget the negative. So now I've got negative 2 times negative 23 over 8. Put that over one. Now, my math Macarena says to keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. And lastly, we reduce, right? But we recently have also been taking notice of the fact that when I look across at these two numbers, I need to see if they share a gazinta. What gazinta two and gazinta eight? Well, they're both even. So I know that 2 gives into both of them, right? So 2 gives into negative 2 once, so I can cross this out and make it a 1. And 2 gives into 8 four times, so I can cross that out and make it a 4. So just as an aside, the gazinta they share is 2. Okay, so let's just rewrite this to make it very clear. So I've got negative 1 over 1 times negative 23 over 4. I'm just rewriting it to make it very, very clear. So now I carry on my math macarena and keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. Negative 1 times negative 23. Well, 1 times 23 is, of course, 23. 1 times 4 is 4, and it says that I can, oh wait, negative times a negative makes it a positive, because they're very happy. And it says that I should enter this answer as a simplified fraction. So, I suppose technically it's simplified, because 23 and 4 don't share a gazinta, or, and or, I have to be aware of the fact that that big giant 23 is squishing that tiny little 4. Oh, no. 4 goes into the 23 five times with 3 left over remaining over the 4. So I can either have my final answer as the 23 over 4 or 5 and 3 fourths. There you go. Moving right along, what do we have next? Will the quotient be positive or negative? Quotient, don't forget, if that word scares you or confuses you, it simply means it's the answer to a division problem. But probably most of you just ignored it and carried on. But we're looking at these two negatives here. 
a negative and a negative. They're perfectly happy to be getting along like that. And the answer is therefore positive, not negative. Next, simplify this complex fraction. Yeah, it kind of came out funny over here. So let's just go over here and make it so it doesn't look quite as weird. Five eighths. Oh, I remember talking about complex fractions and how fun they are. Five eighths over five fourths. I remember a complex fraction is just a fancy way. This is just a fancy way of saying dividing fractions. Right? So let's just rewrite it like we would if we were dividing fractions, which is what we're doing. 5 eighths divided by 5 fourths. Woohoo! Math Macarena, here we come. First, we will divide. Keep the first. Flip the second. What, what am I doing? Going crazy. Got all excited. That's four over five when I flip it. Then we multiply. Keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. Lastly, we reduce. That's five times four is 20 and eight times five is 40. So, of course, when I reduce that, what's the gazinta that 20 and 40 share? What goes into 40 and what goes into 20? The gazinta they share, of course, is 20 because 20 goes into 20 once and 20 goes into 40 twice so my answer is one half that was fun fun yeah okay next simplify the expression and write the answer as a reduced fraction divide mix numbers here we go so i have to go around this six times one Six times one equals six. And then six plus seven is 13. So I've got 13 over six divided by, here we go round again. Five times one equals five. And then five plus three equals eight. Right? Does that seem about right? I think it does. Okay, so that'll give us a nice, wonderful number of 8 over 5. Right? Mm. So, next. Keep the first. Flip the second. Then we multiply. Keep the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So 13 times 5. Oh my gosh, Mr. Silva, oh, I need a calculator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, do we really though? 13 times 5, 10 times 5 is 50, 3 times 5 is 15, 50 plus 15 is 65, and then I've got 6 times 8, well, hopefully you know that is 48, right? And they do not share a gazinta, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that. The only thing you might want to do is say to yourself, well, that... 48 might just strain themselves holding up that 65, right? Ouch, ouch. So how many times does 48 go into 65? It goes into it once with what left over? Well, 65 minus 48. Well, if it was 68 minus 48, that would be 20. 
with a difference of 3, that actually means it's 17 over 48. So truthfully, either one of those answers would work. Nice job. <sighs> yes, I knew that we would get to the point where we'd be eat. I love eating apples and avocados. Yummy. Okay, one-sixth. We have to go in order from left to right. Left to right. Yes, yes. So that means we have to do one thing at a time. I know there's a bunch of you just want to dive right in here. Oh my gosh, I just want to do this. Well, that's what we're going to do. But we're going to take it a piece at a time because I know some of you still are getting freaked out by these fractions and you just don't believe me when I say fractions are our friends. Wait a second. I do want to point out to some of you because some of you are like, Mrs. De Silva, that's not 23. I know. I jumped forward. This is number 33. And then I think the next one I did is 34. They went along with the last two problems. I should have brought that to your attention before I barreled right ahead. I got so excited about the math. You know how I am. So slowed right down there for a moment because I knew I forgot to mention that to you. So um, I did. I should have grouped them together in the test itself, but obviously I didn't. But it's okay. So here we are. So, um, I do realize that there's a different way, a number of different ways to do this, but, okay, here we go. I love eating apples and avocados. So, for the moment, we are not going to do anything. Step to the side. Okay, so we're not doing anything with that right now. We're just doing things with these two, okay? Left to right. So... I love eating apples and avocados. If you never paid attention when we did this, you should pay attention now. I means we need some improper fractions here. Well, we don't have improper fractions because we don't have any mixed numbers. So it's okay. We're just going to bring down our one-sixth minus negative three halves, okay? Sometimes that one doesn't count, so there's my i. Next, I go to my least common multiple. And my least common multiple, of course, is of the 6 and the 2. Least common multiple of 6 and 2. Well, multiple means going up. 6 and 2, the number that both 6 and 2 are gazintas of, would be 6, because 6 goes into 6, and 2 goes into 6. It's so fun to say, huh? So that means I would rewrite this as something over 6 minus some negative number over 6. So you see how I rewrote that? I ignored the top numbers for now and just rewrote those bottom numbers, okay? Based on my LCM being six. Okay, next. My first number here is already a six. So six times six, six to get to six, I multiply times one. So one times one equals one. That was easy. My two though, to get from two to 6, I need to multiply times 3, right? So I take my top number, there it is, and do 3 times 3, and that's going to give me up there, which is going to be 9. Okay? Now, we ignore the bottom numbers because they're the same. They're 6, and we just take everything on top, including the signs. Just this stuff right here. Okay. Oh, I forgot. There's something I forgot, and I am sorry. Let me go back here. The L was the LCM. The E is equivalent fractions. Next is to add or subtract. 
in this case, I'm subtracting, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring that straight up here, and I'm just going to write the top, top numbers. So, so I'm not even looking at fractions anymore. This is why fractions are our friends, because they're so easy to deal with. I need my calculator. I want to make them decimals. Stop doing that. Make things so difficult, you silly people. It's okay. We all know that fractions are our friends now, right? Yes, Mrs. DeSilva. Okay, perfect. Oh, look at this, how fun I get to sing. Stay, change, change, cha-cha-cha. Don't forget to cha-cha-cha or else you'll get it wrong. Stay, change, change, cha-cha-cha. One plus nine, you can all do that. You know it's 10. Woohoo! go team. Now that is my top number, and I know six is my bottom number. Yes, numerator and denominator, but I know all of you like top number, bottom number. So here we go, tens on top, positive, six is on the bottom. Oh no, six is on the bottom, it's being squished. So let's take, how many times does six go into 10? Well, it definitely goes into it once with four left over, six stays on the bottom. Oh, six and four, they share a gazinta. What goes into both? The gazinta they share is two. So four divided by two is two. And six divided by two is three. There is your final answer. Oh, wait, no, I lied. I got so excited because we are not done because we still put this to the side. We have to add 5 eighths to it, right? So all of this right here. Oh, no, stop doing that. Ungroup it. Oh, just forget it. We're not going to do all this fancy stuff. Whoa, don't do that. Okay, we know we've got... 1 and 2 thirds plus 5 eighths. when it was 10 6 because it's next page 1 and 2 thirds hey come back 1 and 2 thirds plus 5 eighths right mm, there it is 1 and 2 thirds plus 5 eighths that's wicked fun okay so now we go now we need our eye Improper fractions. I should have just left it from the previous one. Remember on the previous page? 10 sixths. I should have reduced it from there and said the gazinta they share is 2 and made that 5 over 3 because 10 divided by 2 is 5 and 6 divided by 2 is 3. Yeah, it is. So. Um, that would mean we would have five thirds plus five eighths, which makes sense anyway. If I change this, it would become five thirds. So I've got five thirds plus five eighths. That is what this becomes when I apply the I to it, okay? I, there's my I, love eating apples and avocados. Oh, the A is for answer, by the way. I don't think I did that in the previous page because I got so excited. You know how I am. Okay, so the LCM of three and eight. Shouldn't have circled them there. Allow me to undo. LCM of 3 and 8. Don't like that either. The LCM of 3 and 8. The first number we hit that both of them go into happens to be 24, which I know is the way most of you do it. You just multiply them together. But be careful. That isn't always the smallest number. And sometimes you give yourself ginormous numbers to deal with. So 24, I'm just going to take this and bring it down. It will be the number on the bottom for both of these. Okay, so 
something on the bottom plus 24 on the bottom. Here we go. So 3 gets to 24 by multiplying times 8. So I do 5 times 8, which I know is 40. Okay. The next one, there's lots of 5s and 8s in here, so make sure you're keeping track. Bring this back around, go through it again, ask me questions if you need to. How do I get from 8 to 24? I multiply times 3, right? So 3 times 5 is, of course, 15. Now I ignore the 24. And I just take the top part up here, all the stuff on top. I send it on up there so that I can do my addition, right? I'm going to do 40 plus 15, which I know everybody can do without your calculator. 40 plus 15 is, of course, 55. I send that on down here. As my top number, bring across my bottom number, I end up with 55 over 24 as my final answer. Oh, that was terrifying. I sent it to the end. 55 over 24 is my final answer. Or I can notice the fact that 24 is too little to hold up that 55. 24 goes into 55 two times. 2 times 24 is 48. So that means 55 minus 48, there is 7 left over. 2 and 7 24ths. So either one of these would be your final answer. Nice job. Yes. One more to go. This one, multiplying and dividing. Woo woo. Here we go. So I cannot multiply this as a mixed number. Remember, this is number 34. Remember, I skipped ahead some numbers to keep them grouped together by skill. So 3 times 8 is 24, plus one more is 25 over 8 times 2 fifths. Now, let's make sure we acknowledge the reducing that we learned about 25 and 5. Both share a gazinta of 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Let's not forget about our 8 and 2. Share a gazinta of 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. I am going to rewrite this because now it's a big, messy... <laughs> 5 over 4 times 1 over 1 equals 5 over 4. I'm not done. I know I get excited too. So now it's 5 fourths divided by 2 and 1 fourth. I cannot divide with that mixed number there. I need to change my mixed number into an improper fraction. So that is then going to become 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So 5 fourths divided by 9 fourths. Keep the first, flip the second, then we multiply. Oh, look how beautifully this is going to turn out. How fun is this? Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? I hope so. If not, you're going to see it in a moment. Because what do we have here? A 4 and a 4, they cancel each other right out. Technically, they both become 1s. But that means the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. I've got 5 times 1 and 1 times 9. <gasps> 5 ninths is my answer. What in the world is better than that? I am thinking nothing, nothing, because that was so easy. 5 ninths is my answer. Nice job. This page that I left blank. Good job. See you in part three.